So that's my disclosure. Everything is uncompensated. I do consult for a bunch of companies. So indications, I don't have to tell this audience what the indications are. They range anywhere from cosmetic, where the patient doesn't like, to symptomatic, um, uh, all the way to uh, C5, C6, uh, venous ulcerations. Um, I want to start with this New England Journal um, uh, randomized controlled trial, EVRA, uh, for a particular reason. Um, this showed that early intervention compared to delayed intervention leads to faster healing rate, fewer um, uh, ulcer-free time for the first year, and it also showed improvement in uh, various patient-reported outcomes in both groups, whether it is um, uh, early or delayed. And it also showed that overall healing rate at one year in both groups, if you did superficial venous therapies, not just ablation, is almost 90%. Now, um, there, might, there are a lot of uh, critiques about this, how small the ulcers were, how short the duration was, and everything else. Uh, we can debate about that all day long, but it's a level one New England Journal article. Um, what I want you to look at is the therapies used, and uh, um, I want to show you that any one of these is actually going to work for these patients. That's the purpose of talking about EVRA. First, to uh, increase awareness of the EVRA trial, um, and the second is that any type of therapy, as you can look uh, here, most of these patients actually received uh, foam sclerotherapy, but there were thermal ablations, mechanical chemical ablations, and uh, the only thing that was not allowed was tripping or phlebectomy. So doing anything, any time, will help these patients. That's the bottom line of the story. Anyway, in terms of eliminating saphenous reflux, we have uh, thermal ablations and non-thermal TT and NTNT. Um, radiofrequency laser, you all know that, and non-thermals are the glue, the uh, mechanical chemical ablation and microfoam ablation, and of course there's uh, uh, um, uh, the classic surgical stripping as well. Um, believe it or not, um, um, I'm sure some of you know this, but RFA was approved in 1998, now 21 years since the radiofrequency ablation has been approved, and close to that, um, laser as well, a few years later than that, but either of these procedures has high uh, success rates at five years, uh, more than 95% in both when done in good hands. Um, what about the NTNTs, uh, the non-thermals? There's glue where you insert a, a little aliquot of glue and, uh, at every specified segment and close it off. The difference between uh, the thermals and non-thermals is you don't need that uh, extra tumescent steps and extra injections uh, and extra needle uh, pokes, but that's the purpose of this NTNT technology and you eventually close the vein shut. So what is the data on this? Um, in terms of complete closure, um, actually a uh, four-year data was just published uh, at uh, Charing Cross in April. And if you look at RFA versus venous seal from the V-close study, they're again over 90%. So this is a good technique too. Um, what about uh, MOCA? MOCA is where you have a hockey stick kind of wire coming out and as you're pulling back, you're injecting sclerosant and sealing the vein shut. Um, through chemical ablation, mechanical chemical ablation. What do we know about this? This is also a very good procedure, high success rates of close to 100% in SSV, as you see here, um, and uh, significant reduction in uh, post-operative pain compared to RFA there, and um, improved ulcers because you can go straight down under the ulcer bed. And then um, you, it was also tested uh, against uh, uh, Venefed, which is the radio frequency. They showed that it's less painful than radio frequency because fewer pokes. Again, bottom line, this is a good, good procedure too. What about Varathena? This is basically a preconstituted foam with uh, a very low nitrogen so that it doesn't implode and it's micro foam. And their trial, the VANISH-2, um, instead of seeing whether the veins remain closed or open, they decided to have a primary endpoint as a patient reported outcome, the VVSIMQ, and they achieved their goal of 80%. And a tertiary endpoint of duplex response was achieved in um, about 70%, uh, about 82% of uh, these patients. And all of them uh, had uh, uh, improvement in patient reported outcomes as well. 
So there is a, there is a concern for DVT with um, the microfoam. Uh, this was 7.2%, um, uh, according to the clinical trial. Uh, in, uh, and again, as we learned more and more as to how to use this procedure, I think uh, post-market this is probably lower, at least in my hands so far, it has been lower than what uh, has been um, uh, reported, and it's all about the patient selection, obviously. The other techniques, um, the non-saphenous techniques, uh, are the phlebectomy, foam sclerotherapy, and I will show you a, uh, show you a slide on foam-assisted phlebectomy, which we reported as a technique for the first time. And then you have sclerotherapy, uh, um, whether it's foam, liquid, or visual, or ultrasound-guided. Phlebectomy is you're making uh, little incisions and pulling the veins out. One of the most important things about having comprehensive superficial venous practice is to have these adjunctive therapy knowledge as well, because if you think that you can just ablate this aphenous vein and get the heck out of there, the patients will not be happy and they'll go to a more comprehensive center. So phlebectomy is you can, you, you can have the patient stand, have a train track kind of uh, drawing here, and uh, in, uh, instill tumescents and pull the veins out. Um, Dr. Kavnik here likes to draw straight lines on the veins itself. I used to do the train tracks. But then I started using this procedure called foam-assisted phlebectomy where I do this all under ultrasound where I inject 0.5% polydocanol or 1% polydocanol so that it creates venous spasm first and then I inject the tumescence next and I use ultrasound uh, to find that vein now which is bright under ultrasound and you can actually see the hook going in and pulling the vein out and it's, it becomes a pretty much a bloodless procedure, less than five cc's most often times. So again, the bottom line here is there is a wide range of indications. Um, you need to know what these indications are and you need to know the, uh, the adjunctive procedures to give comprehensive care. So what about um, suboptimal results? Here is a patient I saw just three days ago in my clinic, um, had a left iliac vein stent, uh, had bilateral uh, great saphenous vein ablations last year, and she, uh, she's coming in with uh, uh, stasis dermatitis, and um, you know, somewhere along, uh, no one did a full exam like uh, Terry here mentioned, and she has cannon waves, as you can see there. And this was tricuspid regurgitation. Um, the next thing is uh, morbidly obese and everyone else that, uh, uh, that Terry uh, just talked about. So final thoughts are, you know, that laser and RFA are here to stay. Sinoacrylate has its role. Uh, you have these slides. And MOCA has its role too. And I think um, PM, the, uh, the microfoam, is more useful in patients who can't pa in whom you can't pass a wire. Uh, into the veins because whether they're post-thrombotic or whatever the reason is, they're extremely tortuous and you can't pass wires and uh, catheters over it. Thank you. <laughs>